Welcome to another video with Mr. Long and we're going to look at five SQL tips that can help you with your grade 12 exam for IT and we're looking particularly at the select statement because most of the questions will be select statements. So let's look at five SQL tips that can help you for your exam. Tip number one. Now I want you to take note. You can take a crib note into your exam and that crib note is your sock. I don't know if you know that. Do you know that? Your sock is a crib note. What do I mean? Well, repeat after me the following. Smelly feet will give horrible odors okay say it with me smelly feet will give horrible odors say it again smelly feet will give horrible odors but so long what are we doing all about the smelly feet what is, what is this got to do well when you write in select statements a lot of time people forget about the order about when to put the where and the, the group by so this is now going to help me because the first must be a select statement and then it's going to be a from and then it's going to be where and then it's going to be the grouped by and then it's going to be the having and then it's going to be the order by so now i've got a little rhyme to tell me what must go where in what order so the select as we said is the select the field names from the table names where where we put our filter criteria group by particular field names having particular filter criteria and then order by a field in ascending or descending order so we now know that it's going to be select from where group by having order or in other words smelly feet will give horrible odors so there we go Tip number two is when you are dealing with multiple tables. If there's a question where you are dealing with multiple tables, take note of the following. First of all, your select statement. When you are selecting the field names, there might be a time when you are selecting fields from both tables that have the same name. So there's a surname in the purple table and there's a surname in the blue table. Now that's a problem. So how does it know which one is which? Well, if that's the case, if you've got fields that have the same name in multiple tables, then you need to put the name of the one table with a dot in front of the one and the name of the other table and a dot in front of the others you can do it for all the fields it'll work as well but you just need to do it on the ones where particularly where the field names are the same in both tables because they might refer to different things like in this case we've got the student surname and the staff surname in different tables and they're not the same thing but we need to refer to the purple or the student table surname and then we also want the staff's surname from the blue table then the other scenario is when you use the from part and you're using multiple tables. So let's take an example. We've got this particular table where there's a CD table and an owner table, TBL CD, TBL owner. So we are going to do a query based on these two tables. Now take note of the name TBL CD, TBL owner. You must mention both those tables in the from part and you put them there with a comma between them, not an and, a comma from TBL CD, comma, TBL owner. Then where clause. Even if there are no criteria, when you are using multiple tables, there will be at least one criteria. And that is the criteria that links the two tables. You will have that every single time. So let's look at the scenario again. So in this case, you'll notice that there is an owner ID in the one table. That's the foreign key that is linked to the owner ID of the TBL owner table that's the link it doesn't mean that primary key to primary key is the link that's not always the case and it doesn't always mean that the names are always the same it's possible that the name in the one table is different to the other but they will tell you what is the link and in this case the cd tables owner id is linked to the owner tables owner id there's a link and you need to specify that in the where clause and you do that simply by saying the cd table dot owner id is linked equal to owners table dot owner id that's the link if there are other criteria that's fine then you can just put an and and the rest of the criteria but you must always put that where clause criteria if you are dealing with multiple tables tip number three if you are using aggregate or grouping so let's say we've got a select statement and we want to find the average price from a particular table called tbl data there's nothing wrong with that that's perfect it'll find the average price that's great however if we want to find the average price for each grade, now this is a problem because it won't work. The moment you've got another field in the select with an aggregate function, you need to use the grouped bar part. So that means you need to say grouped bar and whatever that field is, that is not an aggregate function, that grade, that needs to go into the group bar. So the moment you've got an aggregate function and you've got other fields with that aggregate function, those other fields must be in the group bar. And if we've got a where clause, that's fine. We can say where the grade is 10 or more. So we want grade 10, 11, or 12, that's fine. But if we wanted to find a criteria or filter on that aggregate function, let's say we want to say where the average price is above 100, that is a problem. You can't put 
the aggregate function in the where clause. You can't filter by it in the where clause, but you can filter it in the having clause. So if you are using the aggregate function as some sort of filter, you're going to do some criteria on it, move that to the having clause. So we can do something along those lines. So, so let's recap. If you are doing an aggregate function and you've got other fields, they must be in the group bar. And if you are doing criteria on the aggregate function, it must be in the having clause. Tip number four. If you are using variables from another programming language like Delphi with your SQL statements in some sort of text format, these are my tips for you. So let's say we've got this variable, our input, and we want to include that in our SQL statement. So what I do is I just write my SQL statement as normal. And it's particularly nice if it's at the end. If it's at the end, it's very easy. There, I want to replace that 100 with the variable, our input. It's very easy. I can just take the 100 away, move that apostrophe up and then put the variable at the end and put a plus sign at the end of that. That's very easy to do. It's a little bit more complicated though if we've got other text and we want to put that variable in the middle of that text. So let's look at the scenario. I'm going to replace that 100 with the variable name. Now this part is the SQL part which we want to be in a string and this part is the Delphi part which I want to keep outside of the string. So to do that I'm going to put my apostrophes on either side of the variable and then I'm going to shift up just a little bit and put in plus signs so that we can see that that's the Delphi part and the rest of it with the SQL strings. Let's do another example. Let's say we've got a string variable and we want to put that in a string criteria. So where surname equals long instead of long, I want that long part to be S input. So replace long with S input. Then I'm going to shift up a little bit and put my apostrophes on either side and then put a plus sign in between those apostrophes. So what I'm basically doing here is I'm saying this is the SQL string. That's where it goes. And then when that apostrophe hits, that's when it ends. And then between those two apostrophes is when we are now in the Delphi part. And then when the next apostrophe hits, we'll be back into the string of the next SQL part. So that's how you can do variables when you're dealing with SQL statements. The last tip, tip number five, is when you are using wildcards. When you're using the like feature and you want to say surname like L star, that means I want all the surnames that begin with the letter L. That's why we use the star. Remember when you're using Delphi, however, you can't use the star. You must use the percentage sign. So it would look like this in Delphi, where surname like L percentage sign. Another wildcard is the question mark that is replaced by one particular character. So this is a surname that's four letters long and begins with the letter L in Delphi. You can't use a question mark, you must use the underscore. So your clause would look where surname like L underscore underscore underscore. So to recap, wildcards in Delphi, use a percentage side instead of the star and use the underscore instead of the question mark. So that's only though for the like. When you're using like in the criteria, that's the only time you need to do that. You do not need to do that, for example, if you do select star, if you want to select all the fields, that's still fine to use that star. This is only if you're using the like feature. And those are my tips for SQL. Spenny feet will give horrible odors, so you know the order. Multiple tables, remember to refer to the particular field names with the particular table if they are the same. And remember to mention all of the tables in the from clause and to specify that criteria that links them. Aggregate and grouping functions, remember any other field besides the aggregate function must be in the group part. And any criteria on the aggregate function must be in the having clause. Variables, make sure to separate them with strings and apostrophes. And while causing dolphin, make sure that you know the difference between when you're using the like feature, make sure that you are using percentage signs and underscores instead of stars and question marks. And those are my five tips for SQL. Good luck. For help with other SQL content, go to our YouTube channel, click on that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment. Go to the playlist to find all the topics that could be useful to you. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the mister. Long way.